Hello everybody and welcome to another TraderGuy.com video. This is Chris the Trader Guy and in front of you is the Euro US dollar pair. As you can see, uh, I have it on the daily time frame and I wanted to talk about uh, some bars that I saw. You can see that there were several of these hammers and more specifically I'm speaking of the one on Monday but you saw a couple in a row and that's it's only a pretty uh, strong buy signal as you're at a support level but I actually avoided it and I wanted to talk about why I avoided taking this trade long. Uh, there are plenty of reasons to avoid the euro right now but from a purely technical standpoint this looked pretty good actually and had you gotten in with a break of the top of the range on Monday you had a chance to make some money however you were ra rapidly if you're still in this trade and took on the break uh, you're rapidly approaching the break even level again now why would I not get involved in this there are a lot of different reasons but quite frankly my opinion of the euro is that it is something that needs to be uh, either dissolved or restructured without going too far into the history of Europe um, or any of these uh, religious differences and, and whatnot uh, for those of us over here in, in, in the Americas just imagine some type of uh, fiscal union between the United States, Canada, Mexico Costa Rica, Guatemala, Honduras, Brazil it probably wouldn't fly and the differences in Europe are literally that wide on some things. I mean, you know, people who are from Finland are going to be quite a bit different than people from Greece. And that's going to be the inherent problem in the Euro. It just doesn't make sense. Uh, the European uh, Union in and of itself isn't a bad thing, but I think when you try to make policy for all of these countries from one central location, I think that's where the trouble comes in. Quite frankly, um, they're going to be better off, and I think the end result will be some type of common currency between uh, a handful of countries, maybe Finland, Germany, Holland, uh, Austria, etc. Um, you know, I think there will be a splitting off of it. So because of that I have a pretty negative bias to the euro anyways does that mean that it can't pop up to back up to 145 certainly it can and I don't expect the dissolution uh, dissolution of it next week but uh, we're starting to hear leaked rumors of banks being prepared for a Greek default and most of this is just buying time to uh, try to shield the banks in France and Germany uh, from the Greek default mathematically the Greeks are gonna to have to default pretty much everybody knows this uh, except for evidently the Greek government um, but uh, you know that's probably more politics than anything else also when you have a run like this it's not a one-off thing uh, it very rarely is I should say that gap and that gap uh, do catch my attention as well now when I look at the longer-term charts yes I can see that we're in an area that's uh, very interesting and you would expect to see support but you know looking at the weekly chart we have a shooting star at the bottom of a very serious strong down move what does this mean well this means a couple different things um, number one it looks like we fell through 140 and we actually bounced up and pretty much re retested it you have to keep in mind this is a weekly chart so within 100 pips is pretty close so number one we've already retested the support in my opinion number two it shows that uh, there was a mass sell-off and then they tried to rally it and got forced back down that's a very very signal if you think about it and also you notice that the last couple candles we are starting to find lower lows um, having said all of that that technically tells me that there's a real good chance that we do break through all of this area here once we break through there we're, you know there's really nothing between here and 130 but air so it's very possible that I may wake up one morning and uh, we're at 130 90 overnight you know from a level like this really it's just gonna take one really bad negative piece of news there are people out there that will tell you 
while the whole market's leaning in one direction and the market tries to go out of its way to hurt as many people as possible, blah, 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 you know, go against the herd, blah, blah, blah. Well, not so much because if there's a lot of buying pressure and you're trying to short, or if there's a lot of shorting pressure and you're trying to buy, you know, let me know how that works for you. So looking at this and using a lot of common sense, I just simply didn't go long because it just looked to me like a sucker's rally and it is starting to look more and more like that. Uh, in fact, during the American afternoon session, you can see that this shooting star formed right here at about the 136 level. So that massive pop really only ended up being about 100 pips as far as real bodies in the candle. And on top of that, the uh, dual shooting stars is a really bearish uh, message technically and it was based upon rumors that they are starting to argue about the Greek haircuts uh, as far as the bonds are concerned and if they are starting to argue with that that could throw a lot of the uh, deals and agreements out the window and that of course spooked the market and th this is what the market's been doing anytime there's even remotely bad news out of Europe they just kill the euro so why do you want to own it you know it's one of those deals where yes it you know on that daily hammer it could have popped up at the 140 but it's got to bust through a gap. Yes, it's been filled, but then there'll still be reaction there. It's got to bust through this high. It's got to, you know, contend with 140. So my my opinion of this was it was going to bounce, and it was really a matter of trying to find uh, when it looked weak. I was quite surprised, actually, that it felt so weak so quick. And this is another signal, as far as I'm concerned. This shows that the lows probably are going to be taken out. With the whole world selling euros, I don't want to be the lone guy going in to buy them. So having said that, I'm basically uh, looking at the, uh, you know, the the consensus and looking at the trading world in general as far as the euro is concerned. Um, I'm only selling them. I'm not buying them. So even when I get a buy signal, the only thing it tells me is to pay attention and look for a short signal later. That's a huge difference from when I first started trading, and that was basically the point of this. That you need to learn when it's time to step away and wait for your trading signal. The buy signal that was at 135 was either going to be the buy of the century, or it tells you that uh, you will more than likely have an opportunity to sell from higher levels. Given the current environment, what makes more sense? Well, obviously, selling from higher levels. Um, and the fact that you really haven't been given much of a chance to do that really tells me how bad this currency pair is looking at this moment in time. So anyways, that's my thought. I just wanted to show you why I didn't take this trade, because uh, I'm sure, uh, I'm trying to think, I, I, at least a couple different people I know had mentioned it, and I, I just didn't want to have anything to do with it. So anyways, that was my quick little spiel for this evening. Uh, I will see you guys soon. And uh, if you've got any questions, as usual, you can email me at chris at the Thank you.